Hi, my name is Mike Lucius with Pace Incorporated and I'm here to go over our new IR3100 system. So to start out, it is equipped with an advanced stepper motor system that has tw 28 microns of accuracy placement and we're able to place down to 0201 components and up to 65 millimeters squared. It uses a 12 by 12 inch board holder as the maximum board holder size with two different grooves for the circuit board to slide into an L groove and a V groove. There's an odd shaped board holder kit that comes with the machine that you can also insert onto these rails if you had circular odd shaped circuit boards. The heating technology is a long medium wavelength infrared technology and it's 500 watts on the top and 1000 watts on the bottom. What's unique to our system is you can actually raise the bottom preheater up to the circuit board, virtually doubling the power. If you see here, it has a vacuum pick on the heater head. The machine comes with six different sizes for all your various component types. Our intuitive software interface is all run on one profiling screen through a Windows 10 based software. As you can see here, we are trying to mimic a profile of a reflow oven on a BJ rework system. The IR3100 is a closed loop system, so it's using the top and bottom heater to work together to drive towards these green dots or the target temperature of each zone. The purple lines indicate the end of each heating zone. The first one being the end of preheat, soak, ramp, and then once we reach this blue line, we move into the cool down phase and the fan on the machine automatically turns on. So now I'm going to go through an installation process with the IR3100. And to do that, we go to the green button that says start process. And it's just one click. And once you click, it sh shows you a video GIF with instructions on how to move forward to the next step. Load the circuit board into the board holder adjust the centering laser, verify the bottom heater height, and then click OK once you're done. You always want to go through the prompt before you click OK to move into the next step. Now the 1080i HD camera comes out. You have the centering nest on top on these rails that you click into place. So the vacuum pick can then come down and pick the component out of the component nest. Click OK. The vacuum pick comes down, initiates the vacuum, picks the component up. Now for this application, we're going to use our flux dip tray as opposed to painting the flux on the circuit board. So the flux will be evenly spread on all the solder balls. Load the flux tray, then click OK. The head gracefully brings the component down to the flux dip tray, dips it, brings it back up. You then move the flux dip tray off of the camera and get ready for the alignment phase. The LED lights on the camera then turn on, initiates the camera. And now we have three different adjustments for the alignment. We have our theta, which is right here on the heater head. It actually turns the component, and I always like to get that straight first. Then you have your X and Y to then bring the solder balls and pads together so they match. Once you have that aligned, there's different adjustments you can use. You can center the picture. We have what's called quad field imaging off to the right for larger BGAs. So if the corners are aligned, the center will be aligned. There's different lighting features that you can turn the lights up and down for the component and the circuit board. We also have a negative image button for different circuit boards with different contrasts, which I kind of like. To zoom in and out, it's just simple click of a button, in, out, 
autofocus. And for smaller components, we have a manual focus. Once you have everything aligned up, you then go over to this bottom right button here. It says alignment complete. Click. The head comes up, the camera goes in, and it will now gracefully place the component down to the circuit board. The vacuum releases. The pick then comes off the component for the heating cycle. And now we use our non-contact IR pyrometer, which will drive the heaters in profile through the process. So we don't need to hook up a K-type thermocouple for ease of use. You can then raise the bottom preheater if you need to. Click OK. It actually prompts you to align the IR pyrometer. Once the component has been placed by the IR3100, we go to this blinking red button that says start heating. And once we click that, the machine then starts to warm up to the trigger temperature, which is set at 60 degrees Celsius. And that's our default temperature. You can increase that to another desired temperature. But the reason we heat up or warm up to that trigger temperature is so we start at the same temperature for repeatability. At this point, I can then hit our solder cam, which is in front here, an adjustable LED lighting. It's a high definition development tool that we can use to view the reflow happen in real time. And we'll keep that there for the duration of the installation. And as you can see, our green dot here is still warming up to the trigger temperature. And once it reaches the blue dot and eclipses it, you will hear a beep and it starts the actual preheat zone. And that's about to happen. Now we're into the preheat zone. Also, if you look over here, we have a power distribution graph which is a graphical analysis of the top heater output to ensure a nice balance between the bottom he heater utilization for the best thermal performance. If you follow the thermocouple or non-contact IR sensor is trying to follow the profile we have set and drive to each target temperature in each zone. What's nice about our software is if it's a thermally challenging board and you need more time, all you have to do is just click and drag the screen to extend the time, or you can click and drag the green dot to increase or decrease your target temperature. If you want, you can also go down to the bottom of the screen, use the wheel of the mouse, or click the arrows to make your adjustments. And that's just a user preference. As it reaches each zone, you hear a beep indicating that you have reached the next zone. As now we are in soak and it is following just along the profile. And as you can see with the machine blinking on this IR indicator, the top heater is applying just enough heat to stay in line with the profile in combination with the bottom heater. If you were running into thermally challenging boards, this maximum bottom heat utilization is set at 50%. The higher you go, the more bottom heat you're using in comparison to the top heater. The power distribution graph is a graphical analysis of this red LED light indicator on the top heater head. Now we are about to reach the cooldown target. Once it reaches that green dot, the fan on the machine automatically turns on. The head stays down so you can monitor and watch for a proper cooldown process. Both heaters turn off and now the fan is applying just enough cool air to cool down 
the application. Something that I didn't mention here, you have a percentage, we are 85% of the way done throughout the whole process all the way to the end of cool down. Once this reaches 100, the cool down fan will automatically turn off. All right, now we're gonna go into a removal process. And to do that, we can go to the top right portion of our screen here and click removal, or simply click load profile and pull up an existing removal profile. Once the profile is loaded, we start the process very similar to our installation process. We click the green button that says start process with a simple click. And again, it walks you through the prompts on what you need to do next, load the board holder, which I've already done, adjust the laser alignment, verify the bottom heater, and then click OK to move forward. The camera housing then comes out. We move the centering nest off of the camera. And now here we're trying to get the vacuum pick as close to center as possible to the component for a clean removal. As you can see here on the screen, we're using the X and Y adjustments to get it centered. We have it centered, we then click OK. The camera go back, goes back in, and now the heater head comes down to get ready for the heating cycle. The vacuum pick comes down, triggers the head to stop. We then make our adjustment with our non-contact IR pyrometer to monitor the temperature and drive our profile. You can use a K-type thermocouple as well. Our machine has four K-type inserts, but for ease and flexibility, we'll use this non-contact IR sensor. Go up and click start heating. And now we are warming up to our trigger temperature, which is set at 60 degrees Celsius. And as we're going through our profile here, if you look down towards the bottom, it will show you the time and temperature targets for each profile zone, along with the ramp rate for each zone. Also, once we reach that solder melt temperature, that is being read by the non-contact IR sensor, we have what's called tau, time above liquidus on the profile screen, which will then start counting up in seconds once we've reached that temperature. We can also do that by using our K-type thermocouples, which would be displayed right here in different colors. So when you plug it in, it automatically is being sensed and turns on into this section here. The last 10 seconds, the machine counts down to initiate the removal. The vacuum pick comes down to the component. The vacuum turns on. And the pick 
then releases the component off the circuit board. The fan automatically turns on for the cool down zone. The head then comes up and it gives you a video prompt release component. As it's hot, you click OK and the vacuum releases the component. So that was a brief demo on our IR3100. For more information, please visit our website at www.paceworldwide.com. Thanks.